May this candlelight remind us that you are here with us, O God, and that we worship you this day. And may we remember that you are always near, just a prayer away. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Welcome to the service of worship at Lakeshore United Church in Goderich, Ontario. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we gather. For many thousands of years, the Chippewa of Nawash, the Odawa, the Sagi and Ojibwe peoples sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travelers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was, at times, a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. Welcome to this modified worship service. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, though we may be watching separately, separately we can trust that we are nonetheless being knit together as one. If you are watching this on Herentel or Eastlink, please know that the way services are delivered to the broadcasters that they are a week behind. But we are glad that you have tuned in. To those of you who may be in retirement or long-term care homes, know that we continue to think about you and hold you in our prayers. And to all who have tuned in online or through the broadcast, please reach out if you need to talk to someone. Our contact information is available on our website. My thanks this morning to Sheila Matthews, who's helping with today's recording, and to Nancy Ross, who created a wonderful video, which you will see a little later in the service. Thank you to them. And I'm sure, like me, all of you have a new appreciation for your hairdressers and estheticians, so I'm sporting my COVID hair this morning. Let us come together. Another Easter has dawned, tenderly inviting us to ponder upon the wider truths and the alternative visions. Truths of both heart and mind that find their roots in the mystery and the practicality of God. That life does come from death. That hate is not the final word. That the broken continue to sing with joy. That the trees and the mountains clap their hands. That forgiveness resides in the heart of the human condition. That love, with all of its multiple faces, remains our companion. So Christ is risen, risen again in the midst of it all, that in some astonishing way too, we too may be a people of hope who walk in the light, filled with the Spirit. Let us worship the risen one. O radiant light, O flame, divine, as shines the light of morning's dawn. Come, bless the embers of the earth, sparks flung from our eternal birth. O word of God, the source of life, you rouse us from the night of fears to open souls and minds and ears and hear the music of the spheres. You are the fire that birthed all things, the force that spins the galaxies. You are the flame within all flames, the hidden power that knows no name. From you all things that are were sent, and into you does all extend. Peace. 
peel back the bark of any tree, lift up a stone, they blaze with thee. O happy light, we feel your heat, the starlight shining in our bones. You fill us all with cosmic grace, we host your presence in this place. O risen Christ, you shine in us. O radiant light, O flame divine, O risen Christ, shine in us. The radiance of your holiness, despite the sting of death and strife, we rise to dance. This dance of life. Let us come together in prayer. We have been waiting for the stone to be rolled away, hoping for the door to open to new hope and the new promise of the resurrection, and we come this day in joy. For the tomb was empty, and in Christ the light of your love shattered the darkness of death, O Lord, Holy One. That you, O oh God, beneath the cold and frozen ground are knitting together the plants that are waiting, waiting for the moment to burst through the ground at the beckoning call of the sun and the warmth. We look around and are astonished. We praise you for the gift of the earth, for the moments of creation that encounter us and lift us. as we anticipate the new life that will burst forth when warmth finally shatters the cold, remind us that the moments when we feel cold and dead, that you were there, sitting through the long time of waiting. We remember that hope is sometimes buried deep, but rooted in you. For you assure us that we are not alone. In moments when we are unsure of that promise, O oh God, remind us in the beauty of new life. Remind us through our love for one another. Remind us in moments of worship and prayer. As your love calls us to new life again, we know that we can grow only when we acknowledge those ways that have blinded us to your beauty and the beauty of others. Help us, O oh God, to open ourselves to new life. Forgive us for the ways that we close ourselves off from you and from others because we are too busy or too tired or too angry. Lord, we know that we have not always cared for the life you have entrusted to us. Whether it is the natural world, the earth and the land, or one another near and far. Lord, in your mercy, hear now our silent prayers of confession.
us and make us whole. In Jesus' name we pray, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From death to life, from brokenness to wholeness, we are called and we are beckoned and we are assured that in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You're going to see now a pretty remarkable video that Nancy Ross created. Thanks be to God for such creativity and talent.
are a few scripture readings this morning I wanted to share with you. First, from Psalm 16, which normally we would have read responsively together. I missed that. But from Psalm 16, a song of trust in God. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good part. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are not noble. They are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. In a short reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, and this is a passage where Peter is instructing new followers about the, about the resurrection. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept for you in heaven, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, and may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. And the gospel reading this morning is taken from the gospel of John, and I'm reading from chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. So this is following Mary's encounter with the risen Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After, this, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Jesus, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, but Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the name of the Father, for the sake of the Son, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Have you gazed upon the world with Easter eyes this week? That is to say, have you looked for signs of hope, even amid the worries and the stories of doom and gloom? We walk from the empty tomb, surprised maybe, dumbfounded probably, to find that Christ is risen and rises to life itself still. Yes, still, even in this time of pandemic. And I say these words not to be trite and not to speak the party line, but because there are signs of hope and moments when we are astonished by joy. And you know, the word astonished itself carries with it a little bit of skepticism. It's like, I cannot believe what is right before my eyes. I, and maybe you too, have been astonished by the way that we are working together, doing as we have been asked to stay home, even at great personal cost for some, and some more than others. Astonished that people are coming together and finding new and creative ways to do that, like church online, even if it is only online to sing together, to visit with one another, to share the resources for free and for the benefit of all. All the videos I've shared in the worship recordings have been generously offered to us for our use so that the message of hope and knowledge that we walk this pandemic journey together as one. Astonished. Astonished by the commitment and dedication of doctors and nurses and PSWs and cleaners to care and tend the sick with dignity and humanity, even if it is costly to themselves. Astonished by all the essential workers that show up to keep grocery stores open, the pharmacies, all the cleaners and the truck drivers. Astonished. The disciples must have been astonished by Mary's report of the empty tomb. Still in fear, they hid, uncertain of what to do next, 
afraid probably that they would be next to be arrested and crucified. Into the midst of their fear, Jesus appears. Peace be with you on his lips. And then he shows them his wounds, and it is by his wounds that they recognize him. This is not a God like the Roman Zeus, full of might and power, but rather a God who is revealed in the wounds. Astonishing. For the one who offers peace is the one who carries the wounds of the world, life beyond death. And perhaps the breath of peace can offer life in the midst of life, even when it is difficult or when we are afraid. Peace be with you, Jesus says again, and then he goes on, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. It is not enough to be a spectator of the resurrection. And then Jesus breathes on his disciples. Receive the Holy Spirit, he says. So the work of life begins for the disciples. To leave their cloistered room for the world where they will continue to tell the stories and speak of caring for the little ones, of choosing the path of loving the neighbor and the enemy, of tending the wounds of those waylaid by the side of the road. And I am astonished by this story because this little band of followers who were afraid but with the breath of the Holy Spirit took the gospel of Jesus, the one who showed his wounds. They took it beyond their walls and 2,000 years later, the story is still told and life still emerges from fear and life is still present in the face of death and the peace of life beyond death sustains us still. Astonishing. Friends, during this time of being physically separated from one another, there are astonishing things afoot. For the first time in my lifetime, I think we have opportunities to do things differently when we emerge from this time. On April 22nd, it will be the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and through this time of pandemic, we have realized just how interconnected we are to one another, regardless of boundaries and borders, but also how interconnected we are with the earth. When Jesus appeared to Mary in John's Gospel, he appears in the garden, and that is no coincidence. And it should remind you of the first garden in Genesis, the garden of creation. Because John is saying, the resurrection sighting proclaims that life is being restored not just to humanity, but to all of God's creation. And we have this opportunity, an opportunity to rise from decades of extraction and pollution, of overuse and abuse of God's good creation to start to live differently. Many of you will have seen the pictures from space of the air clearing over large cities as we have stopped stopped our consuming and many of you <clears throat> will have seen the videos of animals finding their way on undisturbed beaches and quiet forests. Can we rise from this time to live more lightly on the earth? To really put our efforts and our energy into creating a green economy? I think we can, 
But it will take all of us, it will take all of us to speak out and to raise our voices, to send letters to our government leaders and to civic leaders, because the voices who want us to go back to the way things were, back to consuming, will be strong, and they will be convincing. We have the opportunity to rise from this time to change what we value as a society. Why is it that we pay those who care for our most vulnerable, that is our frail elderly and our youngest children, so little that they can barely survive? The disaster unfolding in long-term care homes could have been predicted. Staff are paid too little they are not paid as full-time employees with benefits, and so they're forced to work at more than one facility. Why is it that there was such objection to raising the minimum wage <coughs> for all those who are now considered essential workers, like those in grocery stores? Can we rise from this time to value everyone in our society and see that we are all stronger when we all have enough. A guaranteed basic income would resolve a lot of iniquities, as conservative icon Hugh Siegel argues, and it would also save money in the long run. Out of the ashes of the Great Depression and the Second World War, much of the social safety net that we rely on was created in the couple of decades that followed. Out of the ashes <coughs> of this pandemic, we will have opportunities to create a society and a world that is more just, kinder, but it will also take our, jo our voices joining with others to stand the ground, to remain convinced that together we are stronger and that we can overcome when we stand together. But friends, that conviction must also be rooted in the choices that we make individually in our day-to-day -day lives as we rise from this time. Are we prepared to live with less stuff? Are we prepared to leave a smaller carbon footprint? Are we willing to elect governments that think about the whole of society and not just their base? Are we willing to see ourselves individually or see our needs less individually and more collectively than we have in, decade, in the past few decades? We are an Easter people. We believe an astonishing story. We believe because we have witnessed life in the midst of death, hope in moments of despair, forgiveness shattering resentment and pain, and love overcoming fear. And maybe at the end of the day, we trust the one who emerged from death wounds and all, who breathed the Holy Spirit <clears throat> into a small group, who even though they may have carried their fear out into the world, they did so confident in the love of the risen one, love that is stronger than hate, hope that overcomes fear. And this is our astonishing joy and hope too, May you feel the breath of the Spirit upon you, that you may rise to the opportunities and the challenges that lay ahead. And may you trust and know that in that journey, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I mentioned last time, we are grateful that many of you are able to continue 
contributing to the life and ministry of um, our congregation. So thank you for that. To those who may not be in a position to make any offering at this time, we know that you make other off, that you offer yourself in other ways, every bit as important. But let us pray. The gifts of our lives, O oh God, are many, and we are humbled when we consider your generosity. Freely given, may these gifts of ours this day, given in faith, reflect your generosity that we may shower the world with your grace and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us join together for our prayers of the people. Let us pray. O Christ, we are amazed, astonished, that Easter joy has come again. And we celebrate the promise and the hope of the resurrection. Like the disciples, we are at times huddled behind the closed door, full of grief and disappointment for what was and is no longer in our lives and in our church. Burst through the doors that we have built to be encountered again, even if it need be in a new way, a new form, by the good news that death is not the end, that the resurrected one beckons us out into the world so that we may touch it with love and grace and forgiveness. O oh Christ, we are astonished that you encountered your friends and disciples despite their fear, and that you encounter us despite any fear we may hold, our fear of, the cha our fear of change, our fear of the future, our fear of what the world is becoming. Shatter the locks that keep us from you. O oh Christ, we are astonished that you broke into the midst of your friends and disciples, even though they had cloistered themselves away, hiding from the pain of your death. Break into our midst, risen one. Break into the ways that we have closed ourselves off from others, from hurt, from shame. And call us anew to trust and believe in the hope and the promise of the resurrection. O Christ, into the dark places where many may hide, shine the light of your love. Into the cold places shutting out the world, breathe the warmth of your love. Into the broken places of our world, bring wholeness and hope. And equip us to be your disciples again to offer hope and healing, love and grace to those who stand in need. O oh God, we pray for our world, for our leaders. We pray for the many who hunger, for many who face violence and violation, and for those who are in despair. O oh God, we pray this day for those who are grieving, especially those who have to grieve alone. We pray for those who are lonely. Show us new ways to be instruments of your peace. And in the silence, hear our prayers for all those for whom we are concerned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean, each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance and slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. We stand this day with doors ajar, with opportunities to do new things, to discover the love that God holds from you. May you go from this time and into this week, knowing that Jesus seeks you, willing to do his work of love. Go now in the name of the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.